Capitech is a retail bank and unsecured lender with a retail deposit base of around 10 billion rand and loan advances in the region of 22 billion rand. It was established in March 2001 by the team at PSG and listed on the JSE in 2002. It has a market cap of 21 billion rand, a price to earnings ratio of 18.5 and a dividend yield of 2%. Can you own both? And Rob, this is to you, both Able and Capitech. I think you can. If you're taking a view that there's not a bubble in unsecured lending, uh, I think you can. I think that Capitech is moving away from just being a micro lender. I think 40% of its uh, operational costs are covered by transactions now. So they actually do have a good uh, transaction flow coming in and, and revenue from that. So it's starting to look a little bit more like a traditional bank uh, and I think you can own both. Paul, do you own both? We don't own, I don't own it personally, I own African Bank but not Capitec. We do have clients who own this one, although we've typically been anxious that it's too expensive. Which <laughs> and is it's not regrettable. Getting any, it's not getting any cheaper, so bad call on your yeah, behalf. Definitely. Yeah. You know, and I've said before on the show, I knew and had meetings with Chris Otto and Michiel LaRue back in 2002 when they were listing it. I thought, hey, that's pretty bold of you because you'll remember the A2 banks then were all falling apart like flies. So they just said, look, we're going to go in there and we're going to do it. They position themselves as a provider of a full banking solution for the retail customer. And as you say, Rob, they only make a portion now, but they've really made the money from loans. But that deposit base, that retail deposit base, which is around 10 billion, as you said there, is very important because that's the part that they get at a very low rate of funding. And then they can lend it out the back at much more aggressive rates. They also have a wholesale deposit business where they take deposits from other institutions, which I think is another seven or eight billion rand. So they've been quite good at funding themselves, although they did have to go and do a rights issue somewhere around the middle there. And I think they are getting to the point where they're much bigger now, so it's harder for them to grow at the same pace. Can they grow at the same pace? Because that's what everybody is asking. And it, they're almost like the retailers out there. They continue to surprise on the upside. The share price does not pull back. Um, well, the question is, do they have to grow at the same pace? You know, if they, if they grow slightly less than they have been, you're still going to have an uptrend going forward. And, uh, you know, they don't have to provide the growth that they did from when they were down, down at uh, 25 Rand, etc. So I think the growth slows slightly, but it still carries on moving forward. Is this fast turning into a blue chip that you need to have in your portfolio? Look, it's certainly up there. I mean, a 20 billion Rand, it's put its head up. Uh, it's not quite in the allsy 40. I think you need these days to be about sort of 30 or 40 billion Rand to make that uh, club. I don't know though, you I mean it's on an 18 price to earnings ratio, so it's moderated a little bit, but the problem for me is that I think the market's expecting much more aggressive growth. So are you so happy to continue to be wrong? No, well, you know, in the trading update they just put out now, I think there was a little bit of anxiety now, because suddenly you find yourself with an 18 and a half PE, a 2% dividend yield, growth is decelerating, the government's moaning about, you know, people being over leveraged, uh, there's global anxiety. The only oh, thing so about I, see, I see your argument here. There is a unsecured lending bubble when it comes to talking about Capitec, but not so when we talk about yeah, ABLE. It comes interesting, down to who the shareholder base is. You is. see, Capitec has this like loyal base of shareholders that live in places like Pretoria and Stellenbosch who will buy this thing. They don't care what the results are. It's only going higher as far as they're concerned. <laughs> Kim, what do you think about the thesis he's putting forward? It really well, is a dangerous <laughs> ground here. Yeah. Well, I think on the, on the bad debt side, you know, a lot of 50% of their loans are to government employees. So they're a little bit more sticky. Their, their, their loan bad debts are not as bad as others. And because of that, I think they've got the, the people that are going to, to pe normal people going and, and banking with Capitec. And I say normal people that are traditional bankers with Nedbank, et cetera, uh, are, are trading with them. And I think operationally, they're looking really good. I would carry on buying them. So you are hot, I'm uh, assuming, on Capitec, hot or not? Hot on Capitec. I see. They're hot on Able and Capitec. Very interesting <laughs> as we put it to Mr. Tehran. No, I'd like to say hot, and I'm very positive about the space and about the management team, but I think the share is too expensive. Well up above 200 Rand, you can't buy them there, so not hot.